The story begins with Ellie reminiscing about the past, recalling how Manny's group and their friends came together. It all began when they rescued a human baby during a flood caused by global warming. Later, they journeyed into an underground world filled with many dinosaur adventures where they had to fight to stay alive. After escaping the underground world, they encountered a clash with pirates. And if that wasn't already a handful, they also had to stop a catastrophic event, a huge meteor heading towards Earth, threatening mass extinction. Fast forward to the present, where we meet two opossums named Crash and Eddie. They have a strong desire to slide down a very tall ice mountain, but their plans are interrupted when Ellie calls them to come down. In response, they pause and think about whether they should try to be independent. Eddie suggests they should consider the kind of place they want to create, and they start daydreaming about it. However, the places they imagine turn out to be quite unrealistic. Eventually, Crash decides it's time to live on his own, and Eddie declares the mountain as the Opossum Freedom Mountain by sticking a wooden stick into it, which causes a landslide. Meanwhile, Sid, Manny, and Diego are enjoying a relaxing time. When Ellie comes and asks the opossums whereabout, but they don't have any knowledge of their whereabouts. Just as Ellie begins to ask more questions, a sudden landslide occurs, forcing them to take cover behind a large rock. Upon seeing the opossum's actions, Manny scolds them for destroying a leisure spot he had spent two months building. However, the opossums proudly claim that they set a new record by demolishing Manny's place in an instant something no other animals had managed to do before. Manny was really upset, and he told Diego to eat the opossums. However, Ellie stepped in and stopped that from happening. Manny then tried to give the opossums some advice. He told them they should discover their own purpose in life and that there are many new experiences waiting for them out there. But he also warned them about the dangers of starving or being eaten by other predators. Surprisingly, the opossums agreed with Manny's advice. They were eager to explore the world outside and try new things. However, Ellie had a different perspective. She thought the opossums wouldn't be able to survive on their own, and someone needed to provide them with food and protection. Later that night, Manny having a conversation with Ellie. Ellie admitted that she couldn't bear to let the opossums leave because she considered them as part of her family. She shared her memories of how she met the opossums during a harsh winter. Ellie had gotten lost and found shelter in a tree where she encountered the opossums. They welcomed her as family, spent days together, and, unfortunately, lost their mother. Crash and Eddie then entrusted Ellie, the eldest sister, with taking care of the family. From that moment on, Ellie was committed to looking after her two younger brothers. She was determined to ensure they would be safe and okay. Sid, who overheard this conversation, also opened up about his past. He explained that his mother had abandoned him, leaving him with no forwarding address. However, Sid had found a new family that cared for him including Manny and their friends, which made him forget about his earlier hardships. As night fell, they all settled down to sleep. However, while everyone was peacefully asleep, the opossums quietly woke up, their decision made. They were determined to venture out into the world and forge their own paths, seeking independence. With heavy hearts, they said their farewells to Ellie, who had looked after them for so long, and silently slipped away into the night. The following day, Ellie grew suspicious when there was no sign of the usual chaos caused by the opossums. She quickly realized that they were gone. Concerned for their well-being, Ellie immediately rallied everyone to start searching for the departed opossums. Meanwhile, Crash and Eddie were enjoying some playtime with a slingshot. They pulled the slingshot, anticipating it to launch them into the air. However, instead of soaring through the sky, it propelled them right into a massive block of ice. To their surprise, this accident revealed an entrance to the hidden world the underground realm. Excited by the prospect of learning survival skills from Buck, a legendary figure in the underground world, they decided to embark on a new adventure. Not long after, they eventually discovered the entrance to the underground world and eagerly stepped inside. Little did they know that danger lurked within, as a dinosaur inside ordered two others to make a meal out of Crash and Eddie. Upon entering the underground world, the opossums amazed at their surroundings for a brief moment. Suddenly, they found themselves pursued by a colossal spider. With quick thinking and teamwork, they managed to defeat the spider, which ended up crushed by a clumsy dinosaur. Later, they attempted to ride on a seemingly friendly dinosaur, but it threw them off, putting them in grave danger. Thankfully, Buck swooped in just in time to rescue them, ensuring their escape. Suddenly, they found themselves under attack by the very same dinosaur they had encountered earlier. But Buck, with his remarkable skills, 
managed to evade the dinosaur's relentless attacks by slipping into a narrow gap. Despite their escape, an unexpected twist awaited them as they were engulfed by a plant named Brenda. However, Buck assured Brenda that they were his companions. Initially hesitant, Brenda hesitated to release the opossums, but Buck persisted, convincing her of their friendship. Eventually, Brenda relented and spat out the opossums. Following this unusual encounter, Buck questioned them about their purpose for venturing into the underground world. The opossums promptly explained their quest to acquire survival skills and self-sufficiency under Buck's guidance. Buck then inquired if they had obtained Ellie's approval for this decision, to which they confessed they hadn't. In that moment, Buck swiftly led them towards the exit, emphasizing the perilous nature of the underground world. However, upon reaching the exit, they were shocked to discover it blocked by massive rocks. Out of nowhere, a dinosaur emerged, revealing himself as Orson, the dinosaur's leader with an extraordinarily large brain. Orson was a talking dinosaur infamous for his evil deeds. Buck was bewildered and questioned how Orson had escaped the lava pit. Orson remained enigmatic, merely declaring his grand intention to conquer the underground world. Soon, more dinosaurs joined the scene, prompting the opossums to feign lifelessness. Witnessing this, Buck grew increasingly frustrated, realizing their lives were at stake. With his knowledge, Buck steered the opossums away from the impending battle. In a separate location, Buck ordered his animal companion to depart as he journeyed back to his home. There, Buck instructed the opossums to brace themselves, as the path to his place was fraught with adrenaline-pumping challenges. After navigating through an array of obstacles, they eventually reached Buck's place. Upon arrival, Crash and Eddie caused a ruckus, testing Buck's patience. Within his home, Buck introduced them to his cherished pumpkin, a symbol of great significance that Crash and Eddie came to understand. On the other side, Manny and his companions on the lookout for any signs of Crash and Eddie. Unfortunately, there are no traces of the opossums and Sid even fears that they may have fallen prey to predators. The scene then ships back to the underground world, where Buck begins telling a story about Orson. Reflecting on their past achievement of saving Earth from a meteor collision alongside Manny and their friends, Buck decides to return to the underground world. Inspired by Manny's family, Buck aspires to assemble a superhero team. Their target location is the Watering Hole, known as the Whole City where they strive to maintain peace and harmony. Buck extends an invitation to Orson to join their superhero squad, aiming to safeguard the underground world. However, Orson declines, expressing a preference for ruling the underground world rather than safeguarding it. Following this refusal, Orson repeatedly launches attacks on the whole city. Each time, he is thwarted by Buck and their other superhero allies. In one intense battle, Orson with his superior intellect prevails, leading to the unfortunate demise of three of Buck's comrades. Undeterred, Buck and one remaining friend persist in their efforts. Eventually, they manage to defeat Orson and exile him to a lava island. Meanwhile, we are shown a flashback how Orson's escape from the lava island. One day, he faces being devoured by two dinosaurs, but his attempt to flee results in accidentally generates a spark that oddly appeals to the dinosaurs, causing them to obey him. He cleverly employs these dinosaurs to construct a bridge, facilitating his escape from the island. While Buck telling his story, a dinosaur under Orson's command suddenly appears at Buck's home. In response, Buck quickly advises the opossums to hide, but instead of staying hidden, they create chaos and attract attention. The three of them find themselves trapped with no means of escape. Unexpectedly, a gas bomb emerges, releasing gas that causes two dinosaurs and Buck to fall into a deep sleep, though the opossums remain unaffected. Several hours pass after the incident and Buck awakens from his sleep, only to be surprised by the presence of his old friend, Z. Buck inquires about the fate of his cherished pumpkin, and Z reveals that she entrusted it to Buck's sibling. However, it turns out that Buck's sibling is neither an animal nor a human, but a pine cone. Recognizing that they would likely be defeated in a face-off with Orson, given his formidable dinosaur army, Buck proposes meeting with another old friend. They swiftly embark on a journey to the river's headwaters. On the other hand, Orson arrives at Buck's home, finding it empty and eerily quiet. He contemplates bolstering his dinosaur army to gain an advantage over Buck and his companions. Return to Buck and his crew, they make their way to the river's headwaters. Along the route, they spot the ever-expanding army under Orson's command. While Z suggests devising a plan, Buck believes they can proceed without one and heads directly for the river's headwaters to aid the residents there. 
Buck hurriedly instructs the residents to evacuate. Shortly thereafter, the dinosaur is dispatched by Orson arrive, and Buck confronts them individually. Z intervenes and stops Buck, urging him to take notice of Orson's sheer numbers. Orson has amassed dozens of additional dinosaurs. Buck and Z hastily retreat from the area. Subsequently, Buck and Z meeting with Eddie and Crash, who have been patiently waiting for them in a tree. With no time to spare, they depart without delay. Not long after, they arrive at a location where they find a boat. They board the boat to head to a city known as the Lost Lagoon, leaving the whole city through a treacherous river. By late afternoon, they reach a river. On the ship, the opossums are engaged in a lively discussion about Z's full name, suspecting that she may have a secret identity beyond just Z. Surprisingly, Buck and Z become involved in an argument, revisiting their past experiences when they lost their fellow team members. Z points out that she not only lost her teammates but also the old Buck, who has since become more conceited and less willing to cooperate. The close friendship they once shared has undergone a significant transformation. As night falls, Eddie takes over the steering wheel from Buck. They consult a map in their quest to locate the Lost Lagoon. The following day, Crash and Eddie awaken Buck and proudly announce that they've prepared breakfast. However, their excitement is dampened when Z identifies the fruits they've gathered as poisonous prompting them to discard them. In an unexpected turn of events, they manage to capture a snake and briefly consider using it as an improvised rope. Buck and Z quickly intervene, insisting that they return the snake. Despite their seemingly boundless energy, Crash and Eddie go on to catch a frog and demonstrate its ability to shoot fire from its mouth. They plead Buck and Z to allow them to keep the frog, but their request is denied and they're instructed to release it. In the end, they finally reach the Lost Lagoon. Buck promptly signals his old friend using a trumpet. Buck's old friend turns out to be Mama Dino. Buck prioritizes their arrival, seeking assistance from Mama Dino in their impending battle against Orson and his formidable army. Mama Dino initially declines Buck's request for assistance due to a painful toothache. In a hurry, Buck turns to Z, asking her to sedate Mama Dino so that they can extract the aching tooth. After a successful tooth extraction, a sudden appearance of Orson and his troops catches them off guard, leaving them surrounded and with no means of escape. Buck's attempt to wake up Mama Dino for help proves futile, as she remains drowsy. Faced with the overwhelming forces of Orson, they have no choice but to confront the enemy without Mama Dino's aid. Their resistance appears to be in vain, given the sheer numbers of Orson's troops. At this moment, Buck apologizes to Z for not heeding her plans earlier. Realizing the dire circumstances, Buck decides to surrender himself to Orson, hoping to prevent any further harm or capture of his friends. He instructs Z to lead the opossums away from the danger zone. Ultimately, Buck gives himself up to Orson, as it becomes clear that Orson's primary target is Buck himself, not Z or the opossums. In the evening, Crash and Eddie have boarded the ship, while Z engages in a conversation with Mamadino. Z informs Mamadino to meet her at the watering hole as it is highly likely that Orson will take Buck there. As they part ways, Z notices Buck's sword and decides to take it. On their journey to the whole city, they come across several forests that have been visited and ravaged by Orson and his troops. On the other side, Manny and the others discover the trail of the opossums, indicating they had gone underground. Excited and concerned for Crash and Eddie's safety, they hurried into the underground world. But their path was blocked by a massive boulder. Together, they push the boulder away, granting them access to the underground world. However, Sid couldn't resist meddling with the boulder, causing it to wobble dangerously. They had to leap out of harm's way to avoid the falling rock. Before they could catch their breath, Mama Dino arrived. Sid was thrilled to see her again, but she had some troubling news that Crash and Eddie were on a mission to rescue Buck, who had been captured. They were all gathered at the watering hole, so Manny and the other rushed to help Crash and Eddie. Meanwhile, Eddie, Crash, and Z had reached Whole City, which had undergone significant changes. Orson and his companions had burnt down all the nearby forests. Buck was perilously close to being dropped and served as a meal for the dinosaurs. Just as Orson was about to finish his speech, Crash, Eddie, and Z sprang into action. Crash and Eddie diverted their adversary's attention while Z swiftly rescued Buck. They apologized for their selfishness, and Z returned Buck's sword. At the same time, Manny, Mamantino, Diego, Sid, and Ellie all arrived with the intention of helping Crash and Eddie. To their surprise, Crash and Eddie had already defeated their opponents. Meanwhile, Buck, 
who had Orson cornered and almost defeated, found himself in a dangerous situation. Orson made a big mistake by setting some leaves on fire. This action made the other dinosaurs obey Orson's orders. In an unexpected turn of events, Eddie and Crash revealed their secret that they had frogs hidden under their fur that could produce fire. After this revelation, they pretended to be dead and other dinosaurs followed suit. Buck then called for his pet to carry Orson away. Momentano intervened, and with Eddie and Crash's help, they ordered the dinosaurs to devour Orson. Afterward, Ellie approached the opossums, who had become self-reliant and had changed significantly from before. At this moment, they reunited with Buck and met with Z. During their meeting, Z revealed that her real name was Zaza, but she preferred to be called Z. Z then invited Crash and Eddie to join their superhero team. Eddie and Crash asked Ellie for permission to live in the underground world. Even though it made Ellie tearful, she agreed, realizing that they deserved a happier life away from her. Before they left, Ellie hugged her two younger brothers tightly and said their goodbyes. This marked the beginning of a journey of self-discovery for Crash and Eddie. The story then shifts to Crash, Eddie, and Buck, who had set up their headquarters at Buck's home. This is where the story comes to an end. Moral lesson from the story, sometimes it's best not to stick wooden sticks in mountains, especially if you want to avoid angry mammoths and lots of trouble. So remember to think twice before poking mountains.